first questions I usually get is, um, you're not from around here, are you? So I grew up in Chicago, and uh, we moved around a few times with my husband's job, and I've lived in Memphis twice, so this is round two with a stop in Boston in between. Um, my background is in marketing. I went to a school in Illinois and got my marketing degree, and I have um, a consumer product and service background. I worked for research firms where we, I did project management and analysis um, for some of our clients were like Daimler Chrysler, Kimberly Clark, things of that nature. So that's my background in terms of, as I say, career. Then I had my kids, and um, then that's when I started getting into blogging, social media, and all that. And as more time went by, I kind of realized that there's so many similarities to, you know, using social media well, growing your social media following, things of that nature, that parallel business. So as time has gone by, I have a business partner, Kristen, and I, have started helping small businesses just understand and use social media to, you know, benefit in this increasingly online and social marketplace. So, um, sort of by random accident, I started hearing about, I met, met Dave, and I went to bar camp, and I think I heard about bar camp about oh, 10 days <laughs> before it was being held, and um, when I got in an email chain with him, he said, I'd really like to see a clout throwdown. It's like, I could throw it out and thought that's fine, but he couldn't find a taker to, um, Jessica Grammer wasn't interested because she's a very pro club. And so I said, well, you know, I can put together the presentation. So this was originally built um, for bar camp, and then I did add a slide since then because since... Bar camp, there's been a lot of press club has received about privacy violations. Uh, the New York Times even picked up an article um, a couple weeks ago about that. So, um, pardon me? Yes, committed by, by Clout. So, and I have to say, in full disclosure, I was, I thought Clout, I think, has a great idea. I was pro Clout initially, but as time went by and different things happened, um, basically after bar camp, I deleted my Clout profile. Though, you'll see if you try to look me up, it's still there, even though I've disconnected all my clouts and taken away its access from Twitter, which is another, and it's been a month, essentially, since bar camp, and um, it's still there. So, you know, I will present both sides of how it works, but I, yes, I, I, have a, <laughs> I have a bias <laughs> as of right now, so. So, um, as I said, we'll cover what clout is, its algorithm, there's three components to the algorithm. And some of its different features, um, there's a few different corporate examples that I'll give you of how um, corporations are partnering with clout to identify influential users. Um, then, like I said, reasons that people have been growing in clout doubt. And I actually have two Twitter accounts, and there was something very interesting that changed that happened to my accounts um, when there was this big algorithm shift about a month or two ago. Um, so I'll compare those side to side so you can, you know, get a better idea of what I was talking about. Um, okay, so cloud is supposed to measure your social media influence. And um, at this point, there's about 13 platforms that they count well. That was also something that recently came to light. You can connect, and I say 13, there's 12 as you can see up there, but you can do both your personal fan, both your personal Facebook account or if you have a fan page for a business, you can connect that. But at, at this time, they don't want you to do both, so you know you can't. They're not letting you sort of double dip in the Facebook um, pool. So that's where you get the 13 is from the, the other Facebook option. So very recently, Cloud admitted that although that lets you connect those 13, well, 12 accounts, Counts. At this time, they're only actually counting four into the score, and they say that their you know analysts have to really see how the data comes in before they'll add on and actually figure in those additional accounts that you've connected into your score. So um, yeah, basically you have to grant cloud access to your various different social media profiles, and you can see there's a range of. Photos, the professional with the LinkedIn, YouTube, Foursquare, uh, both WordPress um, and blogger uh, blogging platforms, along with Twitter and Facebook. <clears throat> Twitter and Facebook, those are sort of the core, the core accounts that you need to start with or need to have in order for Cloud to give you some kind of um, account or score. And you'll see. Um, which this also leads into one of the complaints that people have had about clout. 
you can see that um, if you log in, if you have a registered account and you log in, you'll get notifications that says, like, invite Stephanie to Clout. And you'll see that Stephanie has her profile picture, her first and last name, that's on Facebook. And you'll see a little score in the bottom quarter. And what has grown to be, you know, a complaint about Clout is it's pulling that information without those people's permission. Because these are people who, I mean, just about everybody has a Facebook. <laughs> so there's people who are on Facebook, but they're not necessarily social media users who are now having a cloud score. So um, that's why I said it, it, it either cloud either tries to pull by Twitter or Facebook in terms of, um, you know, your initial foundation of having some kind of presence on cloud. For me, this is my Twitter profile. So um, that's the bio and the photo that's on Twitter. Although now I have a Santa hat that I updated yesterday. So. Um, the cloud score, like I said, has three different uh, pieces to its puzzle. True reach, amplification, and network impact. True reach, which they compare to Justin Bieber. This is actually taken from Cloud's website. They have mentioned Justin Bieber and Justin Timberlake. Um, so Justin Bieber also has a perfect 100 score on cloud. So maybe if we get a bunch of, you know, teeny boppers <laughs> falling all over us, we can excel at cloud too. So um, true reach means, you know, how big your audience is, amplification, that's supposed to uh, relate to how people respond to you. If you get retweets, gets responses to your tweets, if you get Facebook comments and likes for your postings, that sort of a thing. And then network impact. And this also ties into one of the complaints that people have about cloud is it kind of indirectly, if you really care about cloud, you really are kind of encouraged to talk to other people with higher cloud versus, you know, maybe you have a, a big sense of community or if you have a business and you have a good customer base and they're not highly connected in terms of social media and you're interacting with them and you're building a community and you have a really high level engagement with them, but if they have a low cloud score, you're not going to see that network impact because of how their algorithm is um, set up. So those are the three pieces of their puzzle. Um, they each score, like if you were to log in, you would see a graph like this one with a score next to it for true reach, amplification, and network impact. And then they figure those three numbers in together to give you the score that you would see, which this is rounded up to the 52 that you saw in the previous slide that was my score at the time. Uh, cloud style, they have a graph that they plot your picture and um, some of these little, which I know it's hard to see this, consistent and focused is where I sit, casual and listening, participating and sharing and creating in broad. And they have names for each of the squares, like dabbler, conversationalist, observer, or pundit, just based on your style. And it figures into you know, your interactions, the types of people you talk to, um, if you talk to more of a core group or you're sort of spread out and talk to everybody, those kinds of things would affect um, where you fall on their little graph. <laughs> So cloud topics, this is something that's new-ish, because cloud says it's been around since 2008, though it's really kind of hit the scene in the past year. So um, this was more um, spring into summertime is when they started talking about topics. And so your topics are supposed to be generated based on what it is that you talk about on social media. So they give you about 10, sometimes I see 9, sometimes I see 11, that's why I say 10-ish. And pretty much everybody I know, and this usually happens when you first receive your topics, you get something that just doesn't make sense. Like for a while I had that I was influential about the Cincinnati Reds. And although I'm a northerner, I've never lived in Ohio, and I don't talk about sports, so it made absolutely no sense that I would be seen as influential on Cincinnati Reds. And it is possible to delete your topic, so if there's something in there that you don't like, you can just go to your profile, go to your topic list, hit the X, and remove it. So, you know, you're not, you know, stuck with that. But it does change over time, and it does eventually correct itself, too. And um, as you can see, because I apparently tweet about bacon sometimes, that <laughs> it's one of the top topics that I've seen as influential about. So, um, yeah, so I was actually kind of happy that that got in the screenshot when I did this for the presentation. So, um, now, Cloud also offers uh, perks, which is one of the ways that, you know, they're making money and partnering with corporations that 
if you were influential on a certain topic, you can get basically free stuff. So I've seen Subway, you know, coupons for a free sandwich. I got a blanket some, somehow. Um, when the Spotify app hit the scene, anybody who was a registered clout user were, but were able to be one of the first people to use Spotify. Um, apparently, they don't have bacon perks because then I would be somebody who they would be reaching out to. Um, so yeah, so that's how the, the, they use the topics to tie into the perks. So um, this is what an, uh, 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 what your topic list would look like. And um, like I said, they're just listed. There's about up to 10. And what Cloud has started to do, this is, again, one of their newer features, is they allow me to give plus K to other people who I'm connected with on social media. So um, the way that it works is I would navigate to Dave's profile, see what Dave is influential about, and then I can click the give plus K um, to Dave. So I can only give Dave plus K if it's on his topic list. So if he influences me in some way other than what's listed, I, I can't choose it. You can't add in topics at this time. And um, it started out when they first introduced Plus K, where you could give five topics, five Plus Ks a day. And then recently they increased it to 10, which anybody with a keen business sense can understand why, because they're getting more people to their website, they're getting more page views, because you have to click through to the profiles to give all these Plus Ks. And then once you click the Give Plus K, you're presented with this option to tweet or share. So then if you do tweet or share, it goes out in your you know, Twitter stream or your Facebook profile with a link back to Cloud to encourage people to, you know, oh, hey, I gave Dave this, and so now maybe Dave's going to go sign in and give me plus K on something else. So that's how plus K works, and um, that's one of the things that people started to kind of grumble about because um, you can kind of see that it benefits, you know, Cloud right along with, you know, spreading goodwill between your fellow tweeters and Facebook friends. So, uh, Cloud likes to say that it's, you know, it's measuring your overall social media influence with the, that one big score that it gives you. And um, it's also, in the example of Subway, which I had mentioned about the perks, Spotify and Chevrolet, um, they're, it's partnering with big brands to identify users who are seen as influential on certain topics. Chevrolet has a new subcompact that's coming out in 2012, and there's, I believe, five test markets in the country, and they're looking for people who are influential on things, um, not just cars, but adventure and travel. And they want to identify those users and give them a chance to test drive this new subcompact, hoping that they'll then talk about it on social media and that other people who, you know, see them as being influential on adventure and travel and cars would take that into consideration and potentially go test drive and then buy that brand new Chevrolet. So that is how, um, you know, those, those are just a few examples of how Clout is trying to work with some of these brands um, specific to the topics. Um, in Volver, which I haven't been, hadn't been familiar with before um, I was reading this article about it, but they work with the really big, like, Fortune 100 uh, style companies, and they uh, try to develop customer reward and loyalty programs because um, they just feel that if they know, you know, their customers better, they, they can, or if a corporation like, I believe Nike is one of their clients, you know, if they can help them tell Nike more about their users and what they care about in their lifestyle, you know, obviously it's a win-win situation for them. So that's how Involver is using cloud to develop these programs. And um, as this algorithm that cloud uses has changed, you started to see a lot of people who were complaining that they were either in the process of winning over a job, you know, as a business-to-business -business situation or getting hired for a job as an individual. And because they put on their, you know, resume, my cloud is this, and then cloud had this algorithm change. And then their cloud dropped by 10 or 15 points, sometimes 20 points, that it kind of hurt them in winning the job or securing the new position um, because there are there are companies who, if they're looking for social media people, are using this as a barometer to measure how successful um, the potential employee actually is. So, now we're getting more to the cloud note. 
as I mentioned, the plus K, the critics of the plus K are that this is really just about cloud getting page views and traffic and free publicity because, you know, cloud's name and cloud's handle is tweeted out every time one of those plus Ks is shared with uh, the public Twitter stream. Um, friends give plus, friends plus K about bacon. Um, I have, I've seen it several times that, you know, people that you are friends with, if, if there's something that they're influential about that's kind of goofy, it's like, I'm going to go give them plus K about that. I mean, I have a friend who's seen as influential about Kim Kardashian, and she can't stand Kim Kardashian. <laughs> and she's tweeted about how she can't stand Kim Kardashian, which is how the topic was added to her list to begin with. But, you know, when you start messing around with friends, it's, it's really kind of easy to keep some of these nonsense topics active on your cloud profile. Um, it's also considered very easy to game cloud. I read several several articles of people saying that, you know, they care about clout so much that they'll make a point to sit down every night for 30 minutes or an hour and just go through their stream and just either hit retweet or reply with a ha-ha or, you know, something of that nature or I agree just for the sake of expanding their reach, even though they don't actually have a real relationship with these people and they're just kind of nonsense responses. But the way that cloud is currently set up, it sort of encourages that type of behavior if you really want to, you know, improve your score. So one of the newer features that they've added are they give you badges now when you sign in or when you give plus Ks. And if it's something, you know, if you think along the lines of cloud is supposed to be a true analytical tool, uh, a valid metric, you really kind of discredit the validity if you as a company are then, you know, giving badges <laughs> for people, you know, those two things don't really tend to go together very well. So as you can see, at some point, I unknowingly have earned 22 different achievements um, based on my cloud activity. So the infamous day the algorithm changed and people were crying everywhere. Um, the biggest issues that I see in the algorithm change, because, I mean, obviously, you know, it's, a, it's supposed to be an ever-evolving process. Cloud still says that it's in beta, even though, you know, it's been around for a while. And they, you know, continually want to make improvements to their algorithm. However, again, from a true analytics standpoint, if any of you work with data or analysis, you know that if there's some kind of change, you need to make a notation in the data. What Cloud also did, besides not notating that on this day, this is when everything changed, they went back and changed all the historical data, too which again isn't something from a true analytics standpoint, you know, you wouldn't go back and change all your old data. This also ties into the people or businesses who are trying to secure um, jobs that they were kind of made to look like a liar because even their old data never showed that, oh, I had a you know, cloud score of 70, because now with the algorithm change, it looks like they never did have a cloud score of 70 or anywhere close to a cloud score of 70. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, anybody who's um, on Facebook, you can you'll, you'll get um, if you're friends with that person, you talk to them um, on Facebook, you'll start getting notifications when you sign in that says invite so and so to Clout, um, and it's kind of. It's kind of crazy because they're not even on social media, and those people who aren't active on social media outside of, say, just having a Facebook account, they had scores that jumped 20 or 30 points. So with this algorithm change, the people who actually are very active on social media saw these big dips, and then the people who they're on Facebook, like everybody else is on Facebook, their scores came up. So then, you know, the people who are really active on social media said, well, that can't be fair because there's no way when I have, you know, thousands and thousands of followers and people interact with me on five different platforms, how can you say that now our, because essentially it evened out, that we're equally influential in social media, which is a valid, a very valid uh, comment. Um, and then this, the last point actually ties into my experience between the two Twitter accounts that I have. Barely used non-connected accounts ended up with higher scores than accounts that have, you know, six or seven different platforms connected and are used all the time and interacted with on a regular basis. So the privacy has really hit in about the last month or two. Um, I already mentioned about how, you know, Cloud is pulling Facebook information and things like that and creating these um, scores, I can't say profiles, because they still say you have to register 
to be a member of Cloud. However, they have your face and your name, and they're giving you a score. Um, and in order to delete your Cloud profile, you would have to actually opt in in order to opt out, which is another frustration because, you know, you're, you're putting people there. They don't even know they're there, but then you're making them actually register in order to get off of, off of there. So, um, Maggie Kiefer McGarry, her story started hitting it big, and her story is actually what the New York Times picked up to write about. And what it was is she's very active in social media, and her son, who was 13, commented on one of his mom's posts on Facebook. And because of that, he ended up with a profile. And Cloud says it never considered that if there's children talking to other people that, you know, that their information would be pulled and then put into, you know, the cloud system. But um, that's what spurred a lot of talk of Facebook saying that they're going to investigate cloud, which supposedly they are to see if they're actually breaking any privacy rules. And um, over in the U.K., they say that according to U.K. law, cloud would be shut down immediately. They're in flagrant violation of the UK privacy laws. So it still remains to be seen if they end up, if Cloud, you know, gets their act together a little bit. Because as of this point, they haven't actually, even with all the press that they've been receiving, they have yet to actually remove anybody who hasn't signed up. So all those people who are like are on Facebook, who are having Cloud scores but they haven't opted in, they're still showing up on there. So, these are my Twitters. And as a side note, which then I actually convinced Dave to change his Twitter handle too. I actually swapped my Twitter handles after uh, Bar Camp, so now my main Twitter handle is actually my name versus my, um, the Bell Bean Dog is my personal blog. But at the time that I was preparing this presentation, this is um, the way that my Twitters uh fell out, and um, this was following the algorithm change, and I mean, I don't really, you know, I wasn't one of those people who was like, oh, I lost all this cloud, because mine was six, what was it, 63 is what my main Twitter handle was before the algorithm change. It was more that once I looked at my two accounts side by side, I said, how can I <laughs> put any validity in cloud when I started my Liz Joseph's because I said, well, I'm not going to be, you know, Bell Bean Dog forever, which is why I started it. So I literally would send maybe one tweet a day just to start having some kind of activity on the account. And no one talks to me on this. I don't share blog posts on this. I don't, I have maybe like 100 followers. And um, so it didn't make sense to me when this gets absolutely zero engagement. Nobody even retweets anything that I put on this uh, profile. And as you can see, I only had Twitter and Facebook connected, whereas this one, you know, I had several more social media accounts connected. This one, I'm now almost up to 40,000 tweets, about 3,400 followers, and uh, not only did it drop by 11 points, it fell below the one that I never used. And this one also increased by four points. <laughs> so, like I said, when you put them side by side, Definitely cloud has some work that it needs to get done if it really wants to be taken seriously as a valid metric for measuring social media online fluids.